What is up everybody? This is Blade55555 uh, presenting to you another guide, this time featuring ZVP. I've been asked quite a bit lately on the status of my Zerg vs Protoss uh, build order and I finally found one that I like and figured I would get a video and a guide written. So under the video comments of this there will be a link directly to the guide with build order um, and obviously other things and this is the video guide for the build. Essentially this is going to be a Hydraling Lurker with some drop play into very standard uh, into a late game Broodlord army composition. Lately I've been finding uh, in ZVP the st double Stargate Phoenix into Charizard Archon Immortal. It's a very powerful all-in that, or not all-in, that a lot of Protosses are doing. It's by far the best way to play as Protoss from what I've seen. And uh, the Phoenix allow them to get pretty good map control along with um, able to easily secure their third. Well, they, they can also, this map's very easy to secure fourth. And then also go into Charge on Archon Immortal. Roach Hydra timings don't work as well as normal. They can still work, not saying they don't, but they definitely, um, if the Protoss is with Photon Overcharge and all that, it's pretty easy to deflect. <clears throat> No, I shouldn't say easy. Depends on their micro, of course. So essentially, this is going to be a very standard game. I drone scout, not necessary. Don't have to. I do it because I like to see if I'm facing Nexus first, Gate first, Double Gate potentially. Because this is a this is a map where, in my experience, most Pros is either open Double Gateway into an Adept push, or they go Nexus first. Most common openers I've seen, and I scouted the Nexus first, so I'm going three hash. Versus two gate adept, I don't like the three hash before pool. That comes down to personal preference again. I'd rather get a faster speed and deal with it that way than uh, have the four adepts again with slowlings. So essentially, I'm, I'm going to fast forward a little bit now because this is just very standard opening. It's I did 18 hatch, 20 hatch, 20 gas. I think 20 pool is about what I do. Might have been a 19 pool. And it's just going to be kind of droning. Since I know he only went one gateway, I know I can make drones for a while. No need to make lings right now. Now, if he had opened two gate and you're going to go three hash before pool, then you're going to want to get... Um, well, you're definitely going to want to get lings before a bit quicker. Otherwise, the devs would be here right now. I scout the very fast third. When going three hash before pool, there's no way you can punish this. You can try to do a Ling Bane all in, or you can try to do a Roach push, but if Protoss is playing correctly, they'll have pylons with Photon Overcharge and some units to hold it off. So the best situation when you scout this is, you know, two things. Stargate play is going to be a bit delayed, because this is, you know, this was a three minute third. You also know there's no two base all in incoming, there's no gateway timing incoming, so you can take a fourth and just drone. As you'll see, I take a very fast fourth. Um, I take it right here. You can take it right here, but with the build you're, I end up doing, which is a very, like I said, a Hydra Ling Lurker composition, <clears throat> this is very easy to defend due to how close it is to here. This one, you'd have to jump from here to here when his army's pushing out. And it can make it difficult because he can catch your Lurkers out of position. And I always start my lair between 4.30 and 5. You get back on this gas at about 3.45, then you take the next three gas geysers because lurkers are very gas heavy composition you're going to throw down two evos and you're going to get plus one range and melee and i'm just kind of poking with lings because what this style relies on is a very heavy ling counter attack style with the hydra ling so because this is a very gas intensive style you can make a ton of links and i'm going to showcase in this game using lings to counterattack, attack deny bases, take out bases, while having the Hydra Lurkers dealing with the main army. And you'll see plenty of that in this game as it's starting to ramp up, as he's now trying to take his fourth, which I see. A good thing you should always do as a Zerg, once you have speed lings or once you have map control, always have lings in good spots. You should always have them like here, so you can see when they move out. And as you can see, he's starting to go Phoenix and make a ton of gateways. Now, if I had done an actual three base all in or something, if I'd done a three base rotator timing, it might have worked. 
potentially, because as you'll see, he's been kind of greedy, taking a super fast fourth and not really getting many units, but it may not work, and I, and I choose not to change. To, um, to attempt it, especially since I took a, a very fast fourth. If I plan on doing a three base timing, I'm not going to take this fourth as fast, and then I would have gone for it. But here comes the lurkers, um, ton of lings. We're very even in army supply, or he's actually ahead in army supply. I have, you want to have about 75 drones, no more, but 82 is okay. Because with this style, as you'll see, this Stargate kind of, or this Warpgate kind of play is can be very difficult to deal with. So what you want to do once you start getting your army composition going and you have the extra minerals, you want to place spore crawlers in places like this. And as you'll see, he found the one weakness I had, and he's trying to push. So this doesn't do too much, but um, you want to have spore crawlers over here so that when he warps in, you can kill the warp prison with the spores. A couple spines to buy time, and feel free to leave some roaches behind as well. And then he's going to try to push in here, and this isn't enough. He has too many charge lots, and not enough or mortals and archons. So he's kind of got to pull back here. This isn't a very smart engagement. Because what style he should, what he's normally going to have is he should have been more immortal archon heavy, because it's very strong versus lurker styles like this. But you also want to be safe with the hydras, and I get banelings just in case they decide to do a heavy. I mean they're good against zealots, right? They're good against adepts, but it's also good in case he does a huge warp prism adept attack. If you don't have, want to make roaches, you can do a heavy ling bane style with it. That works just as effectively. And you'll see I got plus two range in a, a melee. You can do either option here. You can either get plus two, plus two for melee and ranged, or you can go into carapace and ranged. Um, I just prefer to get the attack upgrades, but feel free to get your carapace. It's just what I prefer to do. Uh, this style is very heavily influenced by Losira, but I'm making my own modifications to the build that he played. Because um, some things that I think he waited too long for a hive. And you want to start your hive at about nine minutes, or uh, yeah, ten, nine to ten minutes is my goal to start the hive. And then you want to get a greater spire. And as you're going to see, this war prism is going to do absolutely nothing. There's not really any weak spots where you can just get in here. This one might be the only one. As you can see, he's taking his fifth. And I'm just making more lurk as I secure this base. The creep sword makes it so I can easily, you know, I can bounce back here well before he does anything, because that's what creeps breeds creeps breed uh, creep spread is made for. And at this point, um, pretty much the whole style of this, like I said, is to do link counterattacks and lurker defense, and then you want to add in drops. If he gets to the late game, and as you'll notice, he didn't really go a heavy phoenix style this game, which is very good for me as a Zerg because I can start doing drops a little bit easier. Um, he does add in some Void Rays, but these are the most pointless units that Protoss can make. As you can see, I'm starting to get my bank. And this engagement's actually going to go, I, if I recall, goes pretty well for him. Because he's hitting right before my Broodlords, because I kind of forgot to make these Corruptors. Even though my Greater Spire has been done for probably 30 to 60 seconds. And I'm dropping this Overlord here. And I'll showcase what happens there. And this is the composition Protoss wants to go for. It's very good against Lurkers. I mean, obviously, you can still beat it, of course. Um, but you'll see what happens. And I'm going to drop right here. While he's doing this. I'm spreading out the Lurkers as much as I can. But I didn't spread them the best. He gets this base. And I eat that storm, which is not good. And then these Lurkers are doing damage here. I have the Broodlords morphing, and I lose that base. So some things that I could have done better is I could have spread the Lurkers out better. Um, obviously, eating that storm wasn't the best. But as you'll see, he can't really push into me anymore. I have Broodlords. I'm still on four base economy. Losing this base sucks, but it's not the end of the world. You'll notice I have a pretty decent sized bank. And these Lurkers killed eight probes, and they're going to kill a pylon and this uh, DT shrine. And I think he gets this base as well. 
I mean, that's probably the most cost-effective two lurkers you can have. Because the great thing about lurker drops is it requires detection, right? And if they have all their detection with their army, because, you know, you have lurkers here, um, they have to devote getting another observer or something to get detection for that. I don't do it as much as I should this game, but the lurker drops are pretty fun to do. And as you can see, he's doing the smart thing going into these because he scouted the broodlords. And at this point, you want to start adding in vipers, broodlords, hydras. Um, the lings are pretty decently upgraded, except I kind of forgot, neglected to get upgrades. And ultras are obviously not a very good option in, PV in ZVP when they do this style. Um, this style is just kind of, I mean, every one of these units will one-shot an ultra. Or, you know, these immortals here, one-shot ultras. Or very close to it. I don't feel like doing math. So Broodlords are a much better and stronger option than going into <clears throat> um, than going into Ultras. And I believe I have the Crackling upgrade, so I'm trying to snipe this Nexus. And I think he just barely holds on. But this is essentially the late game composition you want. Now, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me for that. If they end up switching their unit composition to a heavy stalker style, feel free to make ultras. Otherwise, I would recommend not making ultras against this style ever. Um, and as you're going to see here, I see these. It's really hard to kind of engage because you want to try to abduct these, but you don't want to get stormed or feedbacked. So I kind of pull back, pooping on this to deny that base, sending in a bunch of speedlings over here. Taking these bases. And he's getting kind of a pretty strong Tempest army. Tempests are the best response to a heavy lurker composition. And the best response for Zerg, depending on what you see. Vipers to abduct. Potentially blinding cloud. You can do hydras or corruptors. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, I think later, once I'm not max, I start adding in a bunch of corruptors. Because corruptors deal with these a little bit easier than hydras because with hydras you have to abduct them and get you know pretty close to them which is hard to do when they have you know charge loss right underneath or storm so that's where corruptors are kind of better and you see I'm taking all these bases and normally what you want to do in this situation is you want to have a couple lurkers at these bases so that these charge lot run bys don't just completely destroy every base you have I don't do it this game but I'm just adding on to this guide is having two lurkers here is very good, very strong to deal with this kind of play. And as you're going to see, I'm going to snipe this with the Cracklings. Broodlords are pushing forward. Hydra's underneath. And you want to spread these out as best you can, because this is kind of a bad engagement for me, because I'm, I'm right by a choke. If I move my Hydra's forward, and that's why you see me kind of start spreading out, because Storm would just destroy these. You're going to see the attack here. Abducts, you know, t nothing too extraordinary. He's going to storm these Hydras, and I'm going to lose a lot of these. Got all the Templar. And then at this point, it's kind of a, get a bunch of Corruptors for the Tempest. Now, no, now, what's the one weakness you see to this style? Is uh, I mean, as you see, he has a lot of Immortals and some Charge Lots. But Cracklings are very good as ground defense for this. And you're going to see he hasn't retaken this base yet. And I'm actually going to send in a bunch of links to destroy this one and this one. And he's just kind of going around. He's doing a good job denying my expansions. And like I said, this is why having a couple lurkers at every base, you know, at these two bases are a lot, are pretty easy. You don't need it at this one because your army is going to be pretty close. But these ones are a bit harder to get your army to. Drop play wise, um, you know, you should be. I should have been dropping cracklings into the main here, while attacking over here. It would make it a lot harder for him to deal with everything. And I killed this base as well, I think, or I killed a lot of workers. And I'm still going broodlords though, because this composition is a very good anti-ground army. Hydras aren't the best, uh, just because again he's got a bunch of charge loss. He's gonna have storm. Immortals with the hardened shield can delay the attacks for a bit. So Roach Hydra is definitely not the answer because Immortals will wreck the sh roaches. 
So the best answer is to have some Hydras, of course. You don't want to just go pure. You could try to go pure Broodlord, Corruptor, Viper. But Lings um, with Hydra support are actually very, very strong versus this style. When you have Broodlords and then the Corruptors to deal with this. Also, Vipers can throw down Blinding Clouds, which does, you know, negate the Immortal damage. Because they can't shoot at a range. As you're going to see here, we're pretty close in army supply. And I'm actually going to crush this army right here. Because here comes the Broodlords, Blinding Clouds, the Lings get a full surround with the Blinding Clouds, so, you know, half his units aren't doing anything. Corruptors are dealing with these, two Void Rays isn't good enough to deal with uh, Mass Corruptors, and then I still have Hydra support. And now he just lost the majority of his army. They're going to see these Cracklings, they're going to take care of this base. And from here, this is just kind of the end game composition I found that you want to go. You just want to keep going. I add in an ultra here, which isn't the smartest thing, but you want to keep getting hydras. You want to keep going broodlord corruptor. Add in some vipers, cracklings for counterattacks. I mean, these cracklings have killed. I mean, I denied this base twice, killed this base, I've killed this base once. Uh, it's they're very very effective in this kind of play. And that so are drops, because if you drop the main right now, I mean, you're going to kill a lot of these, or at least deal significant damage. And then from here, it's kind of game. Um, we're actually pretty close in supply, but I don't over double army supply him. His zealots and DTs ended up taking care of these bases, and I transfer the drones. Loses a bunch of observers. So essentially, I'm just going to fast forward to the end of this, because there's nothing else to really go over. Then he kind of tries one last hoorah, but no way he's going to do anything. So, um, essentially that's, again, the end game composition. Things that uh, I that are going to be in this guide, if you look at the, the link below, because you should be watching this on YouTube, I imagine. Um, I have the guide to the link. It's going to have a bunch of replays versus Grandmaster Korean Protosses, High Master Protosses. Um, it's going to have all that. There's going to be some games that showcase some better droppings than this game I chose. The reason I chose this game out of all the games I've done this with so far is this one showed a very clean late game by the Protoss, whereas most Protosses kind of stick on Charizard Archon Immortal but never go to Tempest, so I kind of am just rolling through them. This, uh, this is one of the few games that I could think of where they actually went late game to transition to counter the Broodlords. So I figured I'd showcase the style in all its aspects. It showed link counterattacks, it showed lurker drops, it showed the end game composition, which is kind of my goal. I wanted every, I wanted everyone to see the transitions, um, my timings, upgrades, unit composition, you know, all that. So the only thing that I wasn't featured in this game that I can think of is lurker defenses here, here, and you don't really need it here. Um, Again, for base drop defense, spores spread out across your main, probably your natural as well is what I like to do. And then have a, just a couple spines. This is more to buy time because honestly, if they can find a spot where they can warp in units, Protoss is going to easily overrun almost any amount of spines. Unless you're investing in 30 spines, which I've never, I don't find worth it personally. I'd rather just keep a couple lurkers at that point. Um, that's kind of what you need to do. Feel free if you want to leave a couple roaches instead. You can leave like six roaches in the main or over here or something with some spine spore crawler support. That works just as well. I would rather keep a couple lurkers because that equals less supply than um, six roaches. And it requires detection, which they, you don't bring when you do a warp prism drop. I think that's about it that I can think of to go over. If you have any questions, feel free to ask under the YouTube channel, on my Team Liquid Guide. Um, feel free to send me a message, whatever. I'll answer any questions. I can. I probably didn't go over everything as well as I could have in this, so feel free for clarification. How do I deal with this? Whatever. If you want to see me uh, live, feel free to follow my Twitch at Blade555. Five, 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 five. Um, because uh, those will showcase. I always stream my, when I'm coming up with new builds and trying it out, so if you want to see builds in progress, feel free to tune into that. And otherwise, that is it. Hopefully this helps you guys out. And uh, peace out.